This lesson is on writing exponents in different bases. This skill is very useful for solving exponential equations. So the first question here says, write each of the following as a power of two. I have 64, one, one over eight, and 262,144. And I wanna to try to write all of them as a power of two. Now there are two ways that you can do this. Number one is to use your calculator and to try the guess and check method. So 64, we could try two to the power of five. And then if it's too low, we try something higher. If it's too high, you try something lower. Now my preferred method is to use the power sheet that I gave you. We are looking at powers of two. So that's the first column here. And I'm looking for 64 which says that it is two to the power of six. So 64 is two to the power of six. Now one is a very special example. Uh, anything to the power of zero equals one. So this would be two to the power of zero. Now the third example I notice is a fraction. Since it's a fraction, I know that there has to be a negative exponent in there somewhere. So I focus on the base, which is 8, and I try to figure out 2 to what power gives me 8. If I look at my sheet, I see that 2 to the power of 3 gives me 8. So this isn't going to be just 2 to the power of 3. Because it's a fraction, we're actually going to go for 2 to the power of negative 3. Now the next one, 262,144, if I try looking at my power sheet, the largest number I have on here as a power of 2 is 1,024. So I could use guess and check at this point on my calculator, or I can try a little bit more formal uh, approach, which is to use that 1,024, which is 2 to the 10. So I'm going to say it's 2 to the 10 times, and I'm going to take 262,144 and divide it by 2 to the 10, which we know is 1,024, and I'm left with 256. So 256 is 2 to the power of 8. So I know that this is 2 to the 10 times 2 to the 8. And our exponent law tells me that when we multiply, we add our exponents if we have the same base. So this would be 2 to the power of 18. Now it's always good to just double check to make sure on my calculator that that's correct, which it is. What I'd like you to do is to take a minute, pause the video, and try the next three questions on your own. Hopefully you paused the video and tried the questions. 7,776 as a power of 6 is 6 to the power of 5. 1 over 36 is a fraction, so it should have a negative exponent. And it gives me 6 to the negative 2 because 6 squared is 36. So to get that fraction, it needs to be a negative 2. And then the last one, which is 36 Nope, 362,797,56. I used my power sheet. The largest one on my sheet was 6 to the power of 10. So I divided that by 6 to the power of 10. And I noticed I had 6 left over, which was 6 to the 1. And when I add the two exponents together, I ended up with 6 to the power of 11. So one of the ways that we use this skill is in doing exponent law questions where the bases don't match. So the first question here says simplify each of the following using exponent laws. And I have 2 to the 9 times 32 to the power of 4. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit to make that a little bit larger. So 2 to the power of 9 times 32 to the power of 4. Okay. To use our exponent laws, the rule is they have to have the same base. These clearly do not have the same base. So what I want to try to do is write them both as powers of either 2 or 32. And it's easier for us to write it as a power of 2. So what I'm going to do is leave the 2 to the 9. That dot just means multiplication. 
and I'm going to see if 32 is a power of 2. So I use my power sheet, I look at my powers of 2, and I see that 2 to the 5 equals 32. So I'm going to take out the 32 and put in 2 to the power of 5, and that's all to the power of 4. Now from here all we do is use our exponent laws. This is multiplication, so when I multiply two things with the same base we add the exponents. 9 plus 5 is 14, so I get 2 to the power of 14 to the power of 4. And then when we have brackets with an exponent on the outside, we multiply the exponents together. So I do 2 to the power of 14 times 4, which is 56. So my answer here is 2 to the power of 56. The next one, I have 625 to the power of 3 over 125 to the power of 2. Now, if I try 125, which is the lower of the two numbers, and I square it, I do not end up with 625. So 625 is not a nice power of 125. If I look at my power sheet, I do, however, notice that 625 and 125 are both powers of 5. 125 is 5 to the power of 3. 625 is 5 to the power of 4. So I'm going to take out the 625 and put in 5 to the power of 4, and that is still cubed. So this is just the 625, and it is cubed, so I put the cube there. 125 is 5 to the power of 3, and that number should be squared. So that's the 125 squared. Now all I need to do is use my exponent laws to simplify. Here we're going to multiply the exponents, so 5 to the 4 times 3 is 5 to the 12. And 5 to the 3 times 2 gives me 5 to the 6. And then our last step is to divide. 5 to the 12 divided by 5 to the 6, we subtract the exponents. Six sorry, 12 take away 6 is 6. So I get an answer of 5 to the 6. All right, in part C, we have 49 to the power of 8, 2,401 to the power of 3, divided by 7 to the power of 5 to the negative 2. In order to use exponent laws here, I need them to all be powers of the same base. So I do notice that the smallest one here is 7. If I look at my sheet, 49 is a power of 7, and 2,401 is also a power of 7. 49 is 7 squared, 2,401 is 7 to the power of 4. So I'm going to rewrite this as 7 squared in place of the 49, and that is to the power of 8. And if you want to put the extra bracket in, that's okay. And then 2,401, we said was 7 to the power of 4, and then that's cubed. And then all divided by 7 to the power of 5, that's a lot of brackets there, to the negative 2. So 7 to the power of 2 to the power of 8, we multiply those to get 7 to the power of 16. 7 to the 4 to the 3, we multiply those to get 7 to the power of 12, over 7 to the power of 5, and that is all still to the power of negative 2. Next, I'm going to multiply. So 7 to the power of 16 times 7 to the power of 12, the rule is that we add the exponents. So 16 plus 12 is 28. Seven to the 28 divided by seven to the five, the rule here is that we divide, when we divide, we subtract. So 28 take away five is 23. So I get seven to the 23 to the negative two. Now I do see that I have a negative exponent and I know a negative exponent makes a fraction, but before I do that, I'm going to multiply using my final exponent law here to get seven to the power of 23 times 2, which is 
negative 46. Now that is simplified, but we don't like to leave it with a negative exponent. So a negative exponent makes a fraction. It has a flipping over action. So what it's going to do is flip the base of 7 to make 1 over 7 to the power of 46. Now, normally we would evaluate this, but 7 to the power of 46, if I try that on my calculator, okay, it gives me something in scientific notation, and I would much prefer to leave it like that.